It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. This poor woman is very ill. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. The Clark Residence, Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Here is the skeleton key. April 1925, Aceh Province, Sumatra. Ah, oh, Mr. Poirot. Oh, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. You asked for me, chère madame? Yes. Yes, of course, I wish to speak with you. But what was it about? No doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband? Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? Not yet, chère madame. There was a great many people in Cheston on the day of the murder. Indeed. People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombside. So, there were no strangers around the house that day? Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go. Immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. This subject will probably be useful to me. This subject will probably be useful to me.
This subject will probably be useful to me. This is where the combs go. The mechanism appears to be broken. Hastings will not be cross with me. This part appears to be working. This couple appears to be having fun. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. Talking about ah yes, uh, uh, Thora Gray. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her, but for me she was nothing but a hypocrite. You're probably right, Madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased that I've. Oh. Convinced you? You are very harsh. Do not forget that the girl is an orphan. Yes, and she used the fact to get around men. Take Franklin. He's fallen for her sweet talking charms. Oh, he's a lovely boy, very plucky and sure of himself. But so naive, oh, when it comes to women. Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well... At eleven o'clock, I saw her talking to uh, someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face, 
Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Hello? Poirot, is that you? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive. I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. How am I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. That does not appear to be very useful. Leaving the code on the trunk. What a strange character Franklin is. So, what is this sound? I should be able to open the trunk now. 
זה ראויה. pile of books, including one about dragons. Nothing interesting. Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Mr. Clark really has refined tastes. Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his trunk? I'll borrow it for a minute. Whiskey and other good quality. Another screw. This engraving is not very easy to understand. I need to sort it out. Franklin must really love his country to have an engraving in his trunk. I think I heard the panel above release. A signet ring? A signet ring with a code written on it. 1587. It may be useful to me. Miss Thoragray Comside Tristan Devon. Arsenic Trioxide Thallium. The Black Dragon's Curse. To Franklin, who will never grow up. January 25, 1928. Car Charlotte.
the door is locked. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while no one is around. A dark dragon for a bright-haired maid. See. I've already seen similar daggers. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. Thora. Comside's private collection. The catalogue for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. February 1922, South Africa. July 1920, Alaska Peninsula. Franklin appears to be very active. Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman. A good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Four Chinese symbols are engraved on this padlock. Well, well, the characters engraved on this disc resemble those engraved on the padlock. Like this, this character appears to be the right way round.
That's it. This character appears to be the right way round. Like this, this character appears to be the right way round. No, it's not the height code. Let's check the Chinese characters again. That's it! This character appears to be the right way round. At last, the cupboard is open. Genteel and wild, English countryside revisited. The Railway Children, E. Nesbitt. For Franklin, owned Tefis Christmas, 1910. Traveling in China, a practical guide for English travelers. Helmet, flask and rifles, Franklin is very well equipped. The plates around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies. South Africa? The African Kudu. Alaska. 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 The Alaskan Kodiak Bear. The Lion of Sumatra. I heard the sound of a mechanism. Strange way of protecting one's safe. Triangulating one's hunting sites on a map. A signet ring bearing the Clark's family's coat of arms. A number is written on it. These documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. A dozen gold sovereigns. Some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much. Hardly enough to justify your robbery.
Eton College School Year 1912-1913. Franklin Clark. School report for Franklin Clark. According to his teachers, Franklin was a good student but lacked discipline. Sir Carmichael Clark comes I Chuston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark Peninsula Hotel, Sasbury Road, Tsimshasui, Kowloon, Hong Kong. Comside, 1935, January the 12th. Dear Franklin, First, I wish you a good start to a successful new year. I have received your letter dated December 10th. Thanks for defending my interest against Wang, this robber. Things could have got pretty bad if you weren't a real good-blooded guy. I envy you for that. Things go on here much as usual. Charlotte is moderately free from pain. I wish one could say more. You may remember Thora Gray. She is a dear girl and a greater comfort to me that I can tell you. I should not have known what to do through this bad time but for her. She has an exquisite taste and shares my passion for Chinese art. No daughter could be a closer or more sympathetic companion. Life has been difficult, but I am glad to feel that here she has a home and true affection. You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I don't object. The longer you stay, the more opportunities you will have to increase our collection. Nonetheless, you should know that we miss you here, and that Charlotte will be gone by the time you come back. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate brother. Charlotte Clark comes I Chuston, Devon to Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Sasbury Road, Chim Shatsui, Kowloon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January 1st. I wish you with all my heart a happy year 1935. Writing my greeting cards, I have affectionate thoughts for you. Always smiling as a child, sailing to distant countries and bringing back to us trunks full of wonder. At home, everything annoys me. Starting with this young Thora Sir Carmichael is so fond of. I have nobody to share my feelings with, so I write to you. How can I tell you what happens to me? The simplest way the better. I am doomed. I still have one year to live, no more. How do I know? I opened the secret drawer of Carmichael and read a letter not addressed to me. In this letter... Dr. Logan tells my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, so, I know. But my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. And if he shares the truth with you, act as you are surprised. Carr will probably speak in his usual convoluted way, but I wanted to be the first to announce it to you. It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards. Charlotte. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while no one is around. I see some papers that were not there the first time I visited. Valuers report property. Building land located in Comside, Churston client, Sir Carmichael Clark, April 15, 1935. Court and Brunskill office. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Ernest Logan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD Comsite Chuston, Devon.
Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Court and Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? Something makes me feel uncomfortable. Brown pellets. <laughs> Revolting. Ta -ta. The gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. Brown pellets. <laughs> Revolting. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. I would like to congratulate Clark's gardener. What symmetry! It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. This object would probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusted her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Thor Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the pass, not far from the property. <laughs> I've finished here. 
I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. May you have peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. Clark's greenhouse. It must hold some rare plants. This wisteria is in full bloom. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shurston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burned document? Yes, you just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. À ce soir. <laughs> 